Yes, he is. Praise God. Yes, he is. Amen. There's many, there's many, many gods, so-called little G's. Amen. That's all they are, little G's. Amen. But we serve the true and living God, and we thank God we know who we serve. We know why we serve him. Amen. See, only the blood bought, the redeemed of the Lord can speak like that. We're the only ones that can talk that way. Praise God. Praise God. So we thank God that we, we, are, we are in the right place at the right time. We know who we are on planet Earth. Glory to God with all the crazy stuff that's going on around us. We thank God we know exactly who we are, why we are, what we are, when we are, where we are. Amen. Praise God. If you're not sure, all you got to do is open up the Bible. Amen. It answers every question. It answers every enigma, every riddle. Hallelujah. Every thought in your mind, it, it answered your thoughts before you thought them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The most reliable thing in the world is the word of God. That's what he said. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. The grass will fade. The, the, the flowers will wither. The grass will fade. But my word, the Lord says, shall endure forever. So we thank God our lives is anchored on the truth of the word of God. And the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Our God who has come down to, to meet his people, who came down to rescue and to redeem his people. Amen. Praise God. And no other God did that. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says the gods of the nations are but idols. They're figmentations of the imaginations of men. Amen. But the true and living God has revealed himself and said in times past he spoke through the prophets and through the apostles. But in the latter days, the Bible says that he has spoken in and through his son. Glory to God. And his son lives in us. Amen. Praise God. So we're the only people on the planet that can truly hear the son of the living God. He said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. Praise God. Why do we know his voice? Because he lives in us. He lives in us. So we're just responding to what's in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord again. We just praise God for every opportunity. Uh, praise the Lord um, to be able to share God's word. And uh, we trust that the Lord will, will help me to articulate what it is that uh, he was downloading in my spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So we, we thank God for that. Uh, let's, let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Praise our God. Heavenly Father, we just bless you and thank you and honor you this morning, and this afternoon, Lord. We just thank you this morning. Uh, once again, Lord God, for what you're doing in our midst, not just in the midst of this house, Lord, but what you're doing in the body of Christ, what you're endeavoring to reveal to us as the body of Christ, Lord, those that are here in the earth, those, Lord God, that in these latter days, these end time, Lord, hallelujah, the, the very light, the very salt, Father God. We, we just want to thank you again, Lord God. We, we may not have even realized how awesome this salvation was when you called us, when you rescued us. But, Father, the darker it gets, the more we see, the more we love you, the more, the more we understand, Lord God, how beautiful your salvation is. Father, may others come to know this salvation, we pray, Father. And so we just thank you as we crack open the word, we open the book of life. Father, we thank you again that you would speak, not, not, not me, Lord, but they'll hear you, that you hide me in the cleft of your presence, Lord God. I'm so humbled before you, Father. Thank you for what you will say and what you will do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So praise God. Praise God. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, this is what this is what the Lord gave me. This is the title of what the Lord gave me. Summoned to the high life, governed from up top. Summoned to the high life, governed from up top. Amen. That's the way he said it to me. Praise the Lord. So, again, in, 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 a, in a time like this here, the hour that we're living in now, uh, there is no greater time to know and to recognize, to realize. It's not new what we've been taught about the inner life. It's not new what we've been talk, taught about living from, from, from that life, living from above, you know, and not, not beneath, not being governed by the things of the earth, the beggarly things of the earth. And if there's ever been a time that we need to understand that, I think it's now. Amen. That we, 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 we've entered into the high life and we're to be governed from up top. 
Amen. And uh, praise God, by the grace of God, I'll be able to share, and it'll come out the way the Lord desires for it to come. Turn over to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, very familiar portion of Scripture. Matthew chapter 11, verse uh, number 28 to verse 30. Praise God. And then it says, this is Jesus speaking. Then Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. Hallelujah. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Turn over to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John chapter 10, starting at verse 9, Jesus says this here, yes, I, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pasture. The thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and to destroy. But my purpose is to give a rich and satisfying life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So uh, these two uh, passages of scripture here that I just read, um, Jesus defines here, number one, he says, come unto me, come unto me. That's the first thing that he, he says. That's his first summons is to come unto me, come unto me, amen. And then, of course, he begins to, to lay out the, the state of every human person, even if they don't know it at the moment. He says all that are weary and carry heavy burdens. Sometimes we don't realize the burdens and so forth because things may be going good in the natural for a moment. But he knows there's going to come a time in your life and my life that we're going to realize that whatever this thing is, it is too heavy. <laughs> it is too heavy. Amen. So we thank God. The first summer he says to come unto me. And then, of course, here in John 10, 9 to 10, we read that these purpose is to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, my purpose is to give a rich and satisfying life. And, of course, unfortunately, in, in, in Christodome right now, as soon as we see the word rich, you know, the first thing that uh, you, we equate is money. First thing that we equate about is money. And, unfortunately, so many are teaching that as we, we know fleecing the flock and things of that nature. The pastor was ministering last week about the shepherd and, 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 and people being sheepless. I mean, I mean, shepherdless, excuse me, the sheep being shepherdless, you know, so you can fall for anything, you know, anything that sounds good, anything that doesn't maybe require uh, of your life. It doesn't require you, the, you to give up your life. It it's always seems to be that's the easiest way. What does that saying go? Uh, water always travels the way of least resistance. Amen. And it's kind of like that. So so. When we see things like rich uh, and satisfying life coming from the master's lips, we know he's talking about the totality of our lives, the whole of our lives. Amen. How many of you know that there are people got a whole lot of stuff, but they ain't satisfied? <laughs> how, how many of us have been there and haven't been satisfied? Amen. Praise God. And that's, that's a reality because we come to realize that these things can't satisfy. You can't satisfy a spiritual need with something material. It will never work. It will never work. So we thank God that the satisfaction of life comes only through Jesus because he is life. <laughs> we haven't just received uh, 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 salvation in terms of, uh, uh, you know, being saved. We've received a person. We've received a person. We've actually received peace himself. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. And that's why it's, the, the Bible talks about the world stumbling, why they stumble at the cornerstone. See, they keep stumbling uh, because they're trying to move Jesus out of the way, and they keep stumbling because he is the only way that can give satisfaction, fulfillment. You know, you can chant, you can, you can do all these different things and, and, and begin to get into asceticism and all these, I've been there, done that, try to do all those things, yoga, all this kind of stuff, and it's not going to satisfy you. It's not going to satisfy you. So we thank God. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. So we're talking about, again, summoned to the high life, governed from up top. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Why are you turning there? Because that's one of the, one of the challenges. Uh, let me just say this now because uh, just in light of what uh, uh, Apostle Vincent was sharing last week concerning, uh, concerning again, shepherdlessness, you know, that, that the, the reality of it is, is that when we truly understand that God has called us to himself and we begin to live from that place, we begin to understand that governed from up top is what's most important. See, when I'm governed from up top, I have no problem submitting to the authority in the earth. And Pastor said something last week uh, about, about the office, that even if you don't honor the man, honor the office. And, and, and I understand what he's saying, but you better honor the man too. But, but I understand what he's saying, that, that if you really want to be blessed, you have to honor the man, and you have to honor the office. So you can start out honoring the office. Amen? And if that's where God has planted you, then you're supposed to stay and honor the man. If that's not where God's planted you, then you shouldn't be there. Amen? Praise God. So, so that would cut a whole lot of, a lot of talking and murmuring out of the church. If that, ain't, if, that ain't, if that ain't the place where you're supposed to be, then you shouldn't be there. Amen? Amen. That wasn't in my notes. But anyway, it's, it's all good. But we need the shepherd as he was sharing. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 said, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider the apostle and chief priest of your profession, Christ Jesus. Amen. So he says that we are holy brethren, partakers of what? A heavenly calling. A heavenly calling. Let that sink in. A heavenly calling. We are partakers of a heavenly calling. And then it says, consider the apostle and chief priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. So everything starts in heaven and it will end in heaven. <laughs> everything starts in heaven and that's where it's going to end at. And you know, you used to have this thing where you say, some folks are so heavenly minded that they have no earthly good. And, you know, and it was, it was interesting with that because I remember that. And one of the things that happens with that is that when it comes time to do something, uh, people are so deep and so heavenly minded, now they can't do nothing. You, you know what I mean? I'm reading my Bible right now. Or, or you know, I'm over here praying right now or, or whatever the case. They, you know, many were so heavenly minded that you couldn't get them to do things, you know, for the Lord. It was like that was beneath that, you know, they needed to do something high and spiritual. I can't clean the toilet in the church. I have an anointing on me. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. And so, amen. So, so that's what happens, you know, that, that people don't understand the reality of that. And so they're so earthly minded, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Now, what I find in the generation now, they're so earthly minded that they have no heavenly good. Come on, think about that. They become many so earthly, so so earthly minded, running after things, their businesses and and jobs, and you know how they're gonna prosper, and you know all these kind of things to, that their souls, their souls have have become weaned. You know, in, in other words, they become so earthly minded. Then when it's time for heavenly and spiritual things, there's no passion. There's really no desire. Amen. So this is what, what, what the Lord was saying, you know. So you had both sides of the coin. Say both sides of the coin. Amen. Say there's got to be balance. So there's got to be balance. Amen. There's got to be balance. All right. So listen, this word consider, it says heavenly consider the apostle and uh, uh, consider the apostle and chief priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. And then it says here, the word consider, it does not mean simply to look at or to notice a thing. Anyone could look at a thing or even notice it without really seeing it. <laughs> the word means to fix the attention on something in such a way that its inner meaning, the lesson it is designed to teach, may be learned. Amen. That's powerful. I'm going to say that again. Anyone could look at a thing or even notice it without really seeing it. The word means to fix the attention on something in such a way that it's inner meaning, the lesson that is what, what's trying to be put across to us, okay? 
what well, the lesson is designed to teach us, we may truly learn it. Amen. So we look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, right? So like you said, not a casual kind of a look. Praise God. We're not doing a casual kind of a look. I mean, I've ever had that, particularly in, 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 in situations, particularly with married couples. Somebody, you know, maybe your wife, husband, whatever might say, or friend, what have you, may come and ask you a question and say, yo, how does this look? You know, and you might be doing something else. And so you might say, oh, yeah, you good. You good. You know, oh, that, that looks good. And then they go and doing what they're doing or whatever, and they notice they got this big spot on it or whatever, okay? And, and he come back to you and say, why you didn't tell me I had that spot there? What do you mean he didn't tell you? I looked, yeah, but you wasn't seeing. You see what I'm saying? So, so seeing is really, it's, it's focusing one's and fixing one's attention on something. And that's what we have to do with Jesus, the high priest. Amen. We have to set our affection on him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. So, so moving right along. So then there's another word. Just laying a little foundation. And we're going to move to govern. Now, remember, we said we're summoned to the high life. The high life is Jesus himself. He is the life. Amen. So we're setting. We're summoned to the high life, summoned to Christ. He's called us. Come unto me. And we've come. Amen. So it says now govern from up top. Govern means to rule over by right and of authority, to rule over by right of authority, to exercise a directing or restraining influence over, to exercise a directing or restraining influence over, to hold in check. How many of you know we need to be held in check? <laughs> How many of you know our mouths and tongues need to be held in check? Our lives need to be held in check, need to come under the control. Amen. The authority and rule of Christ. Amen. And that's, that's, that's what happens again is that, that we must allow Christ himself to govern us, to govern us. And again, then we have no problem submitting. And we'll get there, you know, to, to human authority or wherever, guys. We won't have problems like this on our jobs and we want to supervise and going back and forth and all of that. When we begin to live from the higher life, we begin to understand that, that this is the high life that I'm living out of. When we begin to understand that, then we have no problem because I'm being governed from on top. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Is that good or what, saints? Amen. Praise God. And then another word he had there was partakers. Partakers. It says partake means to, to receive a share. <laughs> to receive a share. The believers are partakers of Christ and of the heavenly calling. By receiving Jesus Christ and his spirit into our hearts, we possess them, their blessings and influences as our own. Amen. When we receive Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit into our heart. We possess them. Their blessings and influence, influences become ours. Everything becomes ours. When we possess them, meaning that when we embrace, we embrace this reality of the indwelling presence of Christ. We, when we embrace the reality of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, what happens is what belongs to them comes on us. So I'm not, I don't have to run to try to be blessed. I don't have to run to try to do any of those things. The blesser is in me. <laughs> the blesser is in me. Praise God. And this is one of the things God is endeavoring to get over to his people. The blesser is in you. Everything that you need pertaining to life and godliness, the Bible says, is in us. We possess it by way of Christ and the spirit of God living on the inside of us. And, of course, the word of God is the thing that we use that activates that reality. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so um, this is the high life, Christ himself, the spirit himself. A rich and satisfying life is what Christ said he wants to give us. Amen. Praise God. So you can have, according to Romans 8, that you can have it apart from Christ. The Bible says that God has given us all things in his son. He said, he who spared not his own son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not with him give us all things? Okay, notice what the scriptures say. How shall he not with him give us all things? So if I'm going after things and it's not with Christ, see, that's not the pattern of God. Amen. So I got a lot of things, but I don't have Christ. 
And then I'm wondering, why am I not satisfied? Amen. So God trying to help us, you know, his people, he's trying to help us in this hour so that we can, we can walk in the right, the right way so that we can enjoy this high life that he has paid for, the price for with his blood. Amen. Hebrews 2.18 says, since Jesus himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are suffering and being tested. Amen. <laughs> because he went through that, he's able to help us now. He's able to help us. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says that the love of Christ constrains us. The love of Christ constrains. See, he's able to help us now. He can constrain me. He can constrain you. Like we said, governing from up top, being able to direct, being, being, being able to keep in check. Praise the Lord. This flesh. How many of you know our flesh needs to be put in check? Amen. It needs to be put in check. So what he's saying is that out of that governance of Christ, through his word, his spirit, he can bring us into check, into control. Amen. We cannot do it apart from him. We cannot do it apart from him. We will fail. But his love constrains us. That love begins to constrain us in situations. I'm seeing you, my brother, through the eyes of love. I'm seeing you through Christ's eyes. I'm seeing people uh, uh, through Christ's eyes. Let me get a quick testimony. I want y'all going to say it. Uh, but uh, I, I was, um, the last couple of days, you know, it rained. And uh, it was kind of pouring down, raining. So I'm standing by, I'm standing by, I park my car, and I, and I have a bus that, you know, because my car, I park my car about six, seven blocks away. So anyway, um, it was pouring down, raining, so I, I said, let me jump on this bus. Right? So the bus was, had not yet come. So I'm standing by the bus stop, and I have my umbrella, and I'm holding my umbrella. And this lady just comes up, and she gets under my umbrella. I had a big umbrella. And then she turned. I kind of looked at her. I smiled. I said, hello. She said, yeah, I'm going to share your umbrella. She said, my husband is right here. Yeah, so her husband is standing there. He got two bags. He's getting wet. Amen. So she's underneath my umbrella. So I said, hold on a second. I go inside of my bag. I have an umbrella. I have a little fold-up totes umbrella. I said, here, I gave it to her, and then her and her husband now had an umbrella. Amen. I told her, no, you keep that. That's, that's the blessing for you guys. So her name is, uh, her name is uh, Angelica. His, his name is Jose. They've been married 47 years. Amen. 47 years. I said, God visit you today. God, guess God showing how much he loves you guys. You know, the next day, <laughs> praise the Lord, the next day it's raining again. It's pouring down raining. <laughs> I know somebody's going to say you're running out of umbrellas, but uh, praise God. So the next day, I, I go, and, um, and I'm walking, and the bus was going to take a long time to come. I said, no, I'm going to walk, even though it's pouring down raining. I start walking. All of a sudden, there's this lady walking in front of me. She's got a cane. She has no umbrella. I mean, and she's, she's walking slow. She's got a cane. And just getting soaking wet. So, you know, I had to hurry up and catch up with her. And I ran, I put my umbrella over her. And so I started, she looks at me. So I said, yeah, I see you didn't have an umbrella. She says, no. I said, how far are you going? She said, well, I'm going all the way down to Union Port. And that was going to be several blocks, several blocks down. I said, you know what? Oh, let me back up a minute. When, when, when I said that I was going to give her my umbrella, this thought came into my mind. Uh, you better not give her your umbrella. You got to minister tomorrow. You're going to be sick. I'm, I'm just telling you how the thief comes. This, that moment want to steal the glory of what God can get in this lady's life. Amen. So, I, of course, I gave the lady my umbrella. And then I just took off jogging, Doc. I just started jogging. It forced me to jog. <laughs> Amen. You know, but, but this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Amen. Amen. It, you know, the real life of Christ. Amen. Praise God. So the Bible says that we're heirs together and joint heirs with Christ. Turn over to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. So we're summoned to the high life. Summoned to the high life governed from the top. Governed from up top. 2 Peter 1, 3, starting verse 3 says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Amen. <laughs> God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. 2 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3. A living a godly life, which is the high life. How many of you know the high life is a godly life? You cannot, I cannot experience the high life if I'm not living a godly life. 
Amen. Now, I may think I am, but, but what's going to prove me out is circumstances or whatever that's going to happen that's going to prove out whether or not I'm really living a godly life, a covenant life with God. We have received all of this by coming to know him. Amen. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. Amen. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature. His nature is in his promises. I like that. His nature is in his promises. So when we embrace the promises of God, you can't embrace the promises without embracing the very nature of God. See, that's the difference from the world's thinking and, 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 and us. See, the world will go in there and try to operate in God's principle. They'll go, you know, grab his word and, you know, on prospering, on different things like that. They'll do that, but then they don't have the nature. See? The difference is we have God's word. We operate in the principles of God's word, but the very nature and character of God that's in his word is, is operating in our lives. It's, it's, it's like going back and forth. Like, say, I'm sitting here with Dr. John. You know what I mean? It's like his life and that divine nature in me, it keeps going back and forth. When I read the word, the life of the word, the divine nature that's been imparted to me now is going back and forth. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that's what keeps me. That's what restrains me. That's what governs me. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So he said, verse 4, and because of his, his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These promises that enable you to share his divine nature, his nature in his, uh, is in his promises, and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Mm. The corruption caused by the devil no. It said by human desires. Amen. Praise God. See, the thief, the thief come to steal. We said kill and destroy. See? So he'll, he'll, he'll endeavor to manipulate our emotions. He endeavored to manipulate us to get us to do things, of course, that would be outside of the character of God that would then, of course, give him foothold, will give him access. Amen? How many know a thief always looks for access? How many know that? A thief always looking for access. You can be sleeping and he's looking for access. He's trying to find a way to get in your car, get in your house, or, you know, get to your property or whatever. Amen? He's always looking for access. But thank God... With the blood, we can be access proof to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he tries to manipulate our desires uh, so that he can govern and rule over us. Amen. So he operates that way through our desires, our human, human desires. Amen. That's how it started in the beginning. Remember with the fruit, it was a human desire that he used, manipulated to gain entrance into the affairs of, of, of man. Amen. Praise God. And he's still doing the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. He's the same devil. He got aliases, but he's the same devil. Amen. He's the same devil. So, so uh, uh, he, he endeavors to manipulate us um, and, and try to keep us in guilt and condemnation and, and all those sort of things. Get you to do something and get me to do something. And then now he won't beat you up. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Get you, you know, talking into doing something. Then when you do it, then he start, ah, oh, man, look what you just did. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. That's why he's a faithful liar. Say he's a faithful liar. He's a faithful liar. You, you can be faithful. You can, you, can be, uh, you can be assured that he's faithful to lie. Amen. And, and, and tell you, oh, you can't be forgiven. Even, I mean, but we know the word of God, even if it happened a second ago, even if you and I did something a second ago, praise God. In the mind of God, when you repent, as far as God says, I don't even remember it. God says, I don't, now I don't quite understand that because we can't because his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. His ways is greater than our ways. So in our reasoning, you know, we keep beating ourselves up because we're trying to understand that, that I did repent and I meant it. But what's, what's going on? That ain't God. It ain't God. It's the enemy trying to manipulate our emotions. It's our own emotion, be, you know, uh, siding in with him, getting in, getting in covenant with him, if you will. Amen. Because the flesh and the devil are getting, uh, getting cahoots together to destroy your spiritual life. Amen. That's what they do. They, they, they get into the flesh will start agreeing, you know, with him to destroy our spiritual life. Amen. That higher life. Say higher life. That higher life that God has for us. Praise God. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. We're moving. Philippians chapter 3. 
Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse, thir- sorry, verse 13. So Paul says this here, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling, that summonings of God, that summons from above. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, like, like, like Don, John, you, 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 you can identify with this. I, I said, Lord, I'm doing life with you. <laughs> I'm doing life. My, I'm doing the lifetime bid. I'm doing life. Amen. See, so I got to let go. And, and reach. I'm going to say it again. So we got to let go and reach. He says, I let go of the things which are behind me and I reach. So if I don't let go of what's behind me, then I can't reach. See, I can't reach because I won't let go of what's behind me. And that's the beauty, again, of, of God's love, this powerful reality of the cross, what, what the cross has done. Oh, man, I wish, but I, but I just tell you, the cross, we all should revisit that, you know, the cross, the reality. And we just came out of that with the brothers, man, you know, talking about experiencing the cross, man. We, we was in there for several weeks. And just how you begin to see the beauty of the cross, not just present, not just, excuse me, not just past, past, you know, it's past, present, and future. The present-day reality of the cross, and we're going to see that. The present-day reality of the cross so that we can be forgiven. We can walk in this high life. Amen. We can live this high life. I can come under the governorship of, from up top. Praise God. Praise God. I, ain't no longer I got to have strife, like I said, with, with no one up there, nobody in authority and things of that nature. Because I'm a man or a woman that's governed from up top. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you governed from up top? Come on. Come on. Amen. Is that all right or what? Amen. Amen. We govern from up top. So look, look at, um, uh, I'm going to turn over to Exodus chapter 3. I just want to see an example, a couple of examples of how this works. Uh, uh, we're talking about Moses. How many of you know about Moses? Amen. And it said Moses, Moses was a murderer. He, Moses was a product of training in the world system in Egypt. He was a military genius. He was all, uh, Moses was all these things. Amen. Amen. But what we said just then, you got to let go the past and then stretch forth and reach for that which is before you. Amen. So Moses, now think about that. Here it is. Moses now leaves uh, and flees from Egypt because he murdered someone. God took 40, waited 40 years. This thing, this thing, it blows my mind, yet it encourages me. Because I've only been walking with the Lord 34 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he took 40 years before he came and visited Moses. And now, here's the man that was a military genius. He, he, he grew up in the Egyptian system. He was high-ranking. People come, good morning, Mr. Moses. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody bowing to him and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And here it is now. He's on the backside of a desert. He's tending somebody else. He ain't even got his own sheep. The sheep belonged to his, his, his uh, father-in-law, Jethro. But you don't, he, Moses, now God done worked, uh, waited for Moses. You ain't hear Moses complaining. Don't say nothing he was complaining. He was just fine with those sheep, you know, tending those few sheep or whatever it was for his, uh, 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 for his father-in-law, taking care of those sheep for his father-in-law. Amen. And then what happens? Then what happens all of a sudden here in verse 3, I mean verse 1 or chapter 3. Come on, look at, look at chapter 3, verse, start with verse 1. So now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. Watch this. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him. Amen. Amen. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Amen. Praise God. And so Moses turned aside. 
uh, to see what was happening. God waited until he turned aside now. And then it said God called him. And, and, and sometimes we don't realize that when, when, when it comes to what has happened in our salvation and coming to the Lord. Now, some people may have just, it may have been they just went to the altar. I don't know. I'm not judging anyone. You may have just went to the altar, you know, confessed Jesus, then you went ahead and went back to your old life or whatever, whatever. You know, that may have been some, some uh, confession or whatever. Or you may have been someone when that thing hit you and, and, and you realized that you was a sinner and you realized that you was, you was living foul, you realized that you had no goodness, no merit, nothing in yourself, amen, and that thing hit you, then, of course, we know the Bible says that, that you were born again, amen. You were, you were truly born again, right? And so the same way, it's the same principle, that Moses turned aside, and when God saw that he turned aside to see that what God did, he called him. He said, Moses, Moses. Anytime God says your name twice, it's talking about urgency. It's talking about urgency. So he said, Moses, Moses, and he called unto him. And Moses said, here I am. Amen. So it was the same way with you and I. So what happens is that as we see men like Moses in the Bible, what we see is that when God summoned them, when he summoned them, after the Lord summoned them, what happened is they began to pursue, to apprehend that which for what they were apprehended. See, that's the biblical pattern. It's not like God comes into your life, you know, you got to go and backslide, you got to go live foul or whatever, do with some other stuff or whatever, so then God got to come back to you again or whatever the case. No, God's best is for us when, when we have this encounter with God, amen, it's to now begin to follow him. Sometimes, like I said, people may get it in the beginning or they may get it in the middle, <laughs> you know, whatever. Thank God for that. But that is the pattern. Amen. So that we can live the higher life. Glory to God. And now they become Moses became governed from above. He became governed from up top. Amen. Praise God. And then, of course, now Moses was sent by God and God said to Moses and you have to turn in Exodus 3, 7 and 10. Deliver. Uh, he told Moses, go deliver my people. I have seen their affliction. I have come down. Now I send you. Amen. So Moses did not, he did not audition for the job. He did not apply for that job. But you notice what happened is God sent Moses to go now and to deliver the very people from where he came from. Now he had to go back into Egypt, the place where people was bound. Good morning, Mr. Moses. Good morning. Now all of a sudden, Mr. Moses comes back and he's got a staff now. He, all he's got is a staff now. And he's coming back into Egypt. Amen. But the difference now is that Moses had now tapped into the higher life. Moses had now been brought into that high life. He had now experienced God 40 days up on a mountain. You kidding me with no food, no water? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. If you ain't humble after that, I, I, I don't know what, what to say. Praise God. Because that's the supernatural sustenance of God. Amen. And, and it's no different with us. That God, when, we, when that happens, when we get in the presence of God, it's the supernatural sustenance of God. See, when you and I get in the presence of God like that, what happens is devils and demons are, and stuff can't get in there. They can't come in there. Amen. The question is, are we going to come to him? Are we going to get in that place? Sometimes we just hang out on the outer court. See the difference? There's the outer court, there's the, the holy place, and then there's the holies of holies. And so as believers, we have to decide, do I want the higher life? The higher life is to live in the holies of holy. It's to be coming in and out of the holies of holy. Not, no, no longer somebody else go in there for me. Pastor, can you go in there for me? No, he said, you can come. The veil has been rent. You can come. The Bible says that in, in 2 Corinthians 4, if anyone turns to the Lord, I'm mean, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 3, it says if anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. The veil is removed. So when you and I turn towards the Lord, the veil is removed. He said no, no longer. Nobody else has to come for you. Nobody else has to follow you around. Nobody has to do anything. If you want this high life, you can come. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. And look at David. David tended his father's sheep. Amen. David, David attended uh, uh, his father's sheep. David, too, did not apply for the job. Amen. But God called David into a higher life and told David, go shepherd my people. You're shepherding sheep. And then he says, now you're going to shepherd my people. <laughs> that, that's, that's incredible how that happens. He had this encounter with God that Samuel comes and anoint him with oil. 
And, and we don't know what David was doing other than singing songs unto the Lord. He was, he was making up music. He had probably had a whole list of songs that he had when he encountered Saul. Amen. Praise God. But that's how it happens. Amen. He had encountered him. Praise our God. Abraham, Abraham was summoned by God. And in the natural, Abraham was doing all right. The Bible said Abraham had servants. Abraham had servants and all of that. You know, they, he had houses and, you know, the whole thing. But God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, you know what? He says, listen, I want you to get up. I want you to leave all that stuff. I want you to leave your father, your, 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 your mother, your, your friends, whatever. I want you to leave, and I want you to come follow me, and I'm going to take you to a place. I'm going to show you. I'm going to bring you into another land. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, he's following Abraham's following him. And as I said, he had. It wasn't like he didn't have anything because he had. But what it was, this was a higher life. God was calling Abraham too. So when he called Abraham, Abraham responded and began to follow God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is that all right or what? He began to follow him. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So all of them talking about, you know, the, the, the patriarchs of old David, Abraham, we can go on and on. All of them were governed from up top. So the question is, are, we, are you and I being governed from up top? They had no Bible. They had no Holy Spirit living in them, yet they were responding to a voice from up top. Amen. Amen. No Bible. They had no Bible, no Bible studies. No, they had no pastors. They didn't have, you know, they didn't have no elders. They didn't have any of that. But yet they began to respond to the voice of the Lord, the one who had summoned and the one who had called them. Amen. So praise God. We think about that, how much more you and I living now. With the life that's in us. We have the life of the spirit in us now. We have, we, as we were reading there, that we have Jesus and we have the Holy Spirit and we possess all of the graces that's on them. That's on the inside. That divine nature is now on the inside of us. Amen. Praise God. And so now we can respond. We can respond to God. Amen. How many, how many are you responding to God? How many are respond, responding to God today? Amen. No matter what's going on around, no matter what's happening in the world, I'm being governed from up top. No matter what is going on, amen. I want to live the high life, so I have to be governed from up top. And, and, and this, again, in this hour that we're living in, as we're seeing all the things that's happening, as we're seeing all the degradation, the, you know, people going through all people with fear, people pushing people in the subways, people, you know, people snatching people's property, going and taking, stealing, just walking up, hitting people, doing all, you know, all the stuff that we're seeing. If, if there's ever been a time we have to understand and begin to live from that place of living out of that place, the higher life, which is the life of Christ, which is the life governed by the Holy Spirit. If, if, we, if it's ever been a time when we need to hear, and that goes for me too, definitely in this season, I'm just saying, Lord, I want to hear you accurately. Lord, please, I want to hear you accurately. I want pinpoint accuracy to hear you, Lord God. If you say go there, if you say give somebody the umbrella, I'm going to give it to them. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to talk about, oh, the totes umbrella cost, whatever. Amen. You know what I mean? Because that's that natural mind that, that will get in the way of stuff, you know. And, and God's trying to bring something into my life in this season. He didn't just be, allow these two things to happen for no reason. You know what I'm saying? He's testing me. He's testing me. Amen. Amen. And so th these, these are the things that happen. And this is the way we want to do it today in our lives. We, we don't want to walk around just kind of obscure, just, just going, you know, waiting for Sunday to go to church or whatever the case might be, uh, or, or waiting for this. No, we want every moment, we want to start being more and more uh, led and governed uh, by the Holy Spirit, this new life taking more and more uh, prestige over what's going on inside of me. Amen. Even people, the wrong, wrong people, people that, that, that that come if you're not coming and you're not speaking to edifying and building up then then in this season I can't I can't allow that to come in my ear gate I can't allow it in my ear gate I love you and all that but I will not allow it in my ear gate I cannot do that because if I do that I can't hear God because I can keep now all I hear is your voice telling me about Linda <laughs> you know what I'm just saying you know what I'm saying so I can't hear what God's saying to me so I got I got to say no 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 I got to guard my ear gate 
I got to guard my heart. That's what Proverbs 4 said, above all things, guard your heart, your heart. For out of it flow the issues, the forces, the wellspring of life. Amen? So we got to do it. Ponder the paths of our feet. Turn not to the left nor to the right. Was God just saying something to be sending? No. He said he knows there's other things that's going to come to distract. There's other detours that are coming. Amen. It's like a GPS, you know. A D D GPS tell you, go this way. You say, no, 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 I ain't going that way, you know. No, no, this is the. Now, you didn't realize they were doing, this, doing construction over there. Amen. And you might have just went that way yesterday. And all of a sudden you come back that way today. Now you can't get through and it costs you another 20 minutes or whatever. Amen. When the GPS said, no, go that. That's why you told me to go that way. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why you prompted me to go that way. I had, I, listen, I tell on myself this morning. I was there. I looked on the thing, the, the bus, because we grabbed the bus to go up by my car on Sunday morning. And so I, um, it said something like 13 minutes, and I started slacking behind. And so Sheila says she had a bag. She ready to go. I said, no, we got about seven more minutes or so. She said, no. She says, she says uh, yeah, I don't want to be rushing, husband. I said, no, we, it's all right. It'll be all right. Lo and behold, we get downstairs. As soon as we get downstairs, hear the bus going by us. Right? <laughs> so I just turned to her. I said, I repent. You was right. I didn't listen. Didn't I say that? I said you were right. I didn't listen. So now I ended up taking jumping in the cab because I wanted to get it on time. It cost me ten dollars. Amen. Amen. Praise. <laughs> okay. And stuff like yeah, it cost me exactly. And that and that's what we want to avoid. And and all of us has been there, done that. You know, or we are there doing that, one or the other. I mean, but that's, that's the reality of it. So I thank God that the reality is that if, if my heart is going to be right, I'm saying, Lord, okay, I received this. I received what you were saying. I missed it or whatever. It's going to come back around again. And I guarantee you, she ain't going to have to tell me that. She ain't going to have to say nothing. I'm going to be on five minutes early or whatever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, um, it, you know, just natural things and these experiences that we have. Amen. So as with men and women of old, we have been summoned into the high life to be governed from up top. Praise God. Amen. So I just want to give you a quick three key points necessary to experience in the high life governed from up top. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to be governed from up top. That's right. Amen. I want to come on. Tell me I want the higher life. I want that high life. Come on, I want the high life. I want to live in the high life. Amen. I was a low life too long. Amen. I spent too many years as a low life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Mm -mm. Amen. So, so uh, three keys. Okay. Number one. Number one. Three keys. Uh, three, three key points necessary to experience in the high life governed from up top. Quick to repent. Quick to repent. Amen. Quick to repent. And I've said it, and I can't say it enough times, uh, um, repentance is one of the most beautiful words to me in the Bible, in all of the Bible. Amen? I think you have, you have love, and then <laughs> number one, then <laughs> repentance. Amen? Quick to repent. And that's what, and, and, and when you read, when we read like about David, that was one of the reasons that David was a man after God's own heart. Not because he was such a great warrior, you know, you know, all with the Philistines and, and he was a great king, a great shepherd. No, but David was quick to repent. David was quick to repent. Even when he did the, the, the situation with him, uh, 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 you know, and having, have, having uh, the gentleman kill uh, Uzziah, not Uzziah, um, uh, having, having him killed because uh, he wanted Bathsheba, her husband, you know. But, but the thing is, w David didn't have no conviction. There was no conviction on David. See? But when conviction came, when the prophet, God had to send a prophet, when the prophet came and that conviction came, David was like, oh, my God. That's how he penned Psalm 51, you know, and started saying, cast not your Holy Spirit away from me. You know what I mean? Creating me a clean heart, oh God. Renewing me a right spirit. Amen. So we got to be quick, quick to repent. Turn over to, to, turn over to Psalms 66. We got to be quick to repent. And while you're turning there, Psalm 17, 2, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, David says this, let my sentence come forth from your lips. Amen. Let my sentence come forth from your lips, Lord. Amen. Don't let it come from the enemy. Let, let, let it come from your, let my sentence come from your lips. And so, I, I didn't write that. Okay, Psalms, uh, where I say Psalm 66? 
Amen. Psalm 66. Hallelujah. How we doing? We good? Amen. Praise God. I feel like a Bible study. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good stuff. It's the word. That's what we need. That's what we need. Psalm 66. Look at this. Verse 13 and 14. One of my favorite scriptures. David says, here, I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. Mm, 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 mm. Do you hear that? I want to pay you my vows. Amen. For what my lips had uttered and my mouth had uttered and I spoke when I was in trouble. Amen. Praise God. And, and that's so powerful because sometimes we forget. We can forget how we were just in trouble last week. We can forget how last year we was, in, we was in a whole lot of financial situation or whatever the case might be, and we didn't know what we were going to do, and then the Lord brought, it, you know, God brought us through it, and then we forget. See? But David, that's what I said I love about David. David said, no, no, I love that. David said, no. He said, he said I will go into your house with, with burnt offering. I will pay you my vows which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. Amen. So quickly we can forget that we was in trouble. And I know that. You know, pe people say that, like a, you know, like guys are being, and I've been there. You know, you get locked up. or whatever. Man, if I get out of here, I ain't never going back here again. You know what I'm saying? The next thing you know, you back there. Oh, Lord, if I, oh Lord, if I get out of this one or whatever, you know. And situations in life. You know, God meets our needs and, and things of that nature. And we forget. Say, well, well you know, I don't forget. I, yes, you did. You didn't go into the house of the Lord with burnt offerings. <laughs> Amen. Burnt offerings just simply means the sacrifice of yourself. Amen. Bring yourself into the house of the Lord. And pay to the Lord the vow, Lord, if you get me out of this trouble, Father, if you help me, if you help me with this one here, if you rescue my child, Lord, if you, if, if you, if you heal me, Lord, or whatever the case might be, and then the Lord does it, and then we forget. Then we forget. We can't live in the high life if we're going to be forgetters. Amen? We can't live that high life if we're going to be forgetters of how good God is and to give him his due. Not just in your, not, not just me in my house and just saying, yeah, God, I know you're good, you know, whatever, and then I put on a song or something. No, 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 that's not paying your vow to the Lord. That's not paying a vow to the Lord. Amen? So, so if we want to live the high life, if we, if we want to experience the high life, we got to be quick to repent. We got to be quick to repent. Amen. The longer you, you and I allow something to go on that the Holy Spirit has convicted us of, it's not going to get better. How many of you ever saw, would think, hope and think time will make something get better? Time don't make nothing get better. I learned that the hard way. You think just in time, you know, in time. No, it's God in time. Amen. It's not just time. It's God in time that will cause the situation to get better. Amen. So we thank God for that. The Psalms 90 and 10, uh, David said this, you have set my iniquities before you, my secret sins in the light of your presence. Turn over to Psalms 31. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Psalms 31, verse 7 and 8. The time just gets away. Amen. Psalms 31. Verse 7 and 8. Listen at this. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. Hallelujah. For you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities and have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. My God, you have set my feet in a wide place. Amen. See that? Amen. That, that I will sing and be glad of the Lord's mercy, rejoice in the Lord's mercy. Why? He hasn't given me over to the will of my enemy. Amen. How many of you thank God he don't give you over to the will of the enemy? Even if, you, even if you went over there in the enemy's backyard, okay? Let's keep it 100. Even if you went over there and I went over there messing with the enemy, and then I tried to run back across the street and he grabbed my legs. He grabbed my ankles. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I thought I was just going to make it. A couple of times I made it, but this time he grabbed my ankles. Amen. I started crying out. Praise the Lord. Can you, can you see it? Amen. Praise the Lord, you know? 
Amen. No. So thank God he does not give me over to the will of my enemies. Thank God. I say, God, like David, let my sentence come forth from your lips. Amen. I'd rather fall on the mercies of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's just, even if God chasing me. David said it was good that I was afflicted, that I might learn your ways. Amen. Sometimes, you know, ain't the devil, ain't binding the devil. Binding, we binding the devil. Ain't binding the devil. Ain't the devil. Lord, you know, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer, as he used to say. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, number two, submit and resist. Turn to James chapter 4. Amen. So, this is another, another key point to experiencing the life, uh, the high life that is governed from up top. Submit and resist. The Bible said, James 4 and 7, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Like we said, God puts things in order for a reason. There is no, there is no resisting without submission. There is no resisting without submission. I'm going to wind up folding up and giving in. Amen to the temptation. I've been there, done that. Amen. Praise God. So he says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. And, you know, the devil is stubborn. He, you know, he's stubborn. So you might say at one time, you know, whatever, and it seems like nothing's happening, you know, so, so you might, you and I might become discouraged. No, no, he hears. He has no problem here. The devil has good ears. He can hear when you say, when you're resisting him. Amen. Saying that I'm submitted to God. I belong to Jesus. My mind belongs to Jesus. My soul belongs to Jesus. My mind, my heart, it all belongs to you. My life. See, we, when we sing in that, we say we mean that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that to God. So when the enemy comes, I've already submitted to God. Amen. I've already submitted to God. So thank God we can resist him. Like I said, he can be stubborn. But we used to say it all the time. If you do the right thing long enough, the wrong people will leave your life. See? Just keep doing the right thing. Amen? And, and they begin to leave your life. Amen? Because it ain't people. Our enemy is not people. But it could be the influences, you know, and so forth in their lives. But if I keep doing the right thing, they'd be like, oh, okay, I, I'll catch up with you later. You going to church? Okay, I'll catch up with you. You know, they call you and so forth. You know what happened with someone? Yeah, I was just here praying. I was just asking the Lord. To, and they said, oh, oh okay, I, I'm not going to disturb you. I'll talk to you later. Amen. Keep doing the right thing long enough. See, that's resisting the devil. It's not people. You're resisting what we said a minute ago about your ear gates. There's stuff going in my ear gate that's going to affect my emotions. I told the guy on my job, you came back, my, my assistant would get so upset that stuff they said about Mr. Herbert or whatever. I told him, don't come back to me telling me what people said. I don't want to hear what people said. He said, no, no. I said, I know your heart. You, 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 you think you're protecting me? I said, I, I'm protected from up top. I'm, I'm good. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. I said, you're being used and don't even realize it. To, they're using you to, 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 to manipulate my emotions. And you don't realize. So, so people come with stuff or whatever. You know, tell them, look, it ain't, it ain't you, baby. No, you, you good. Me and you all right. But, but check, check this out. I don't want to hear about that. Amen. I, I do it. I, I tell. I stop people in a minute. I do not want to hear about it. And some people still just keep talking. You just told them you don't want to hear about it, and they still talking. Until they finally realize you ain't there no more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hello? 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 When they call you back, we must have got a bad connection. No, we didn't. No, I told you to stop. <laughs> I told you I didn't want to hear it. And that's how... That's how we have to become, amen? That's how we have to get. We have to become that, that way because if we're going to live the high life, we got to do things like that, amen? amen? Amen, praise God. Listen what it says here in Peter. I don't, don't have time to turn to it. But listen what it says here, First Peter 5 and 5. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. Uh-oh, like I said, if I'm living from up top, I have no problem with that. And younger don't necessarily have to be with age. Not just talking about age, so much spiritual, spiritual authority. Amen. And that's why sometimes we can't receive anyway. And all of you dress yourselves in what? Humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humility is living the high life governed from up top. Amen. That's what humility is. 
So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of uh, mighty power of God. And at the right time, say right time, right time. At the right time, he will lift you up in honor. He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Amen. Because he cares about. So give all your cares to God. Amen. Remember that we talked about the devil trying to manipulate our emotions. So give your worries. Give our cares. We're learning to cast them over on the Lord. Give them to the Lord. So the devil can't use them. Oh, look what happened to you. Uh, you know, what they did to you when you was a kid or, or what they keep saying about you or whatever. He's saying, cast all those cares upon me. Start opening up the word, finding out what I said about you. What, what did I say? What did I call you? Amen. That's what we have to do and begin to find out, no, this is what my father said about me. I don't care about my earthly father if he didn't be, wasn't a good father or a um, good mother, whatever. But what God says about me, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a jewel. I'm the apple of his eye. Praise God. I'm accepted in the beloved. Praise God. Amen. So praise God. And so verse 8 says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Amen. I told you, watch out. Ain't no matter who, who, whose mouth is coming from. Amen. Look, we look behind that. Amen. We look behind that. And it says, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Watch this. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. And be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. You know, it, this, this comes with the territory. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it comes with the call. Come on, it comes with the call. That's right. When he summoned us, he summoned This came with the call. Amen. But he said, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Now, he's not talking about your own faith. He's talk, see, faith has to have an object. If you and I try to just stand in our own faith, then what will happen is our faith will wane. It will give out. But he's saying stand firm in the faith that is in Christ. That's what he's talking about. So, so faith has to have an object, something to look at. And we know it's the word which reveals to us the living word who is Jesus Christ himself. So when I look, I'm looking at the cross. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the cross and what he did on that cross. So everything that I will ever need, everything, every, every uh, deficiency, whatever, was satisfied on the cross. Amen? It was satisfied. So, so I have to keep my faith, is, my faith is centered on the cross. It's centered on what Christ did. Amen? Come on now. It's centered on what Christ did. Because when the enemy come, if you did something or you didn't do something you're supposed to do or whatever, condemnation gets in, guilt starts coming, you know, things of that nature. No, but then I have to constantly look at the cross and say, did I repent? Did I repent of that? Yes, I did. Okay, so, you know, I tell my mind, be quiet, you know. I'm not listening to you. Yeah, yeah, even to ourselves. Like we said that. We, don't, we can't listen to ourselves. Amen. You can't listen to yourself. You speak to yourself. <laughs> Amen. I listen to myself. I speak to myself. Yeah, amen. So, so he said, your faith, this statement here, your faith in the work of the cross, for the cross is the object that our faith is anchored to. Amen. And I remember that. I had no human teacher when I first got saved, but I got a hold of the reality of this cross. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So uh, turn over to Matthew, last scripture, turn over to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Very familiar portion of scripture. So number three is pray every day. Let your will be done. Amen. Now, if, we, if we're talking about the key to living the higher life, living the high life, and being governed from up top, then Jesus gave us the model here. He gave us the model here. And we should pray this every day. Chapter 6. Uh, verse 9 to 13, and it says, Jesus said, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. This is how we pray every day. Your kingdom, your rule and reign come. Your will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. What is his will in heaven and earth? It's good. It's good. Amen. His will is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. Praise God. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I'm, I thank you for this day's portion. I thank you, Lord. I may not have everything I want. 
I don't have money for shrimp today. Amen. But, Lord, this Frank tastes extra good. Amen. Whatever. Peanut butter and jelly. I say it all the time. Amen. It seems like a lot of people make peanut butter and jelly out of style, but amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. And then he says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. And do not lead us into temptation. That's talking about your evil. Amen. But deliver us from the evil one. How many of you know God ain't going to lead us into evil? Amen. Praise God. No, he's not. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the rule, the reign, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So that's, that's how we live the higher life. That's how we live the high life, being governed from up top and allowing the Lord to begin to reign and to rule in our lives. Amen. Praise God forever. Praise God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we thank you that we are the recipients of this new life, this new life, Lord God, that you have given us, which is none other than your, your son, Jesus Christ himself. Father, we're learning. Teach us how to yield to this life. Teach us how, how the Lord, hallelujah, Lord, how to protect this life that you have given us, Lord, from all the things that will come in our ear gates and in our eye gates. Father, we thank you. Uh, even as we heard this word today, Father, uh, we ask you, Holy Spirit, use this word. If there's areas in my life that, that I need to correct, areas in my life that I need to straighten out, Holy Spirit, I give you access. I say, you have your way. Do what you need to do in me. I want to live the high life. I don't want to live the life of one day up, one day down, my emotions all over the place. No, I want to live in that peace. You said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. You said, and I will give you rest. Glory to God. You said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. You said that you're lowly and meek of heart. Lord, we thank you that your life is in us. Thank you for that reality on the inside of us today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, as we moving to and fro, as we going up and down the earth, wherever we're going, Lord, we thank you that we know that we can live out of the life, that high life governed from up top, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll not be moved by the things that are around us, Lord God. Hallelujah. But we'll keep our gaze on you, Lord Jesus. We'll keep our affections upon you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll not turn to the left nor to the right. You said trust. Trust us with all, trust you with all our heart, Lord, and lean not to our own understanding and, and all our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. Lord, we thank you. It starts with our hearts. Lord, we, we thank you. Our hearts belong to you, Lord. Our mind belongs to you. Our soul belongs to you. Be the one power to keep us occupied. We want you to be the one power that would hold us in possession, Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing in this world, hallelujah, that will not turn to the tant tantalizing, entertaining spirits of this age, Lord God, that will rob us of the passion, rob us, Lord, of this wonderful life with you. So, Father, we thank you today. If there's anyone who needs repentance, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, whatever it is, Lord God, as you, you pointed out, Holy Spirit, they'll release it. They'll release it even now, glory to God, and that you would honor the repentance of their heart, that your peace will begin to flood their souls. Give them a token. Let them know beyond a shadow of a doubt there is a way out, and that way is repentance, glory to God. That way is submitting unto you, resisting whatever it is, glory to God, whatever doors that were open, that those doors would be shut, Lord God. Hallelujah. And that you would keep them shut. You shut doors no man can open. You open doors that no man can shut. Lord, we pray that if there's any doorways in, this, in our souls, Lord God, that they'll be shut to the voice of the enemy. They'll be shut, Lord God, to whatever would endeavor to manipulate our emotions, Lord God. Hallelujah. And cause us to stumble and to fall. Lord, we thank you that we can pray every day that reality that your will be done in our lives. Let your will be done in our lives. Even as it is in heaven, we want to be in harmony with heaven. We want to be in harmony with heaven, Lord. So we, we just thank you again, Father. We just thank you that your word finds its mark, that you will bring it back to our remembrance, Lord, in the times of trials, tests, whatever it is, temptations. 
So, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for all these things. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah for himself, for himself. Praise God, praise God.